Hello everyone, welcome to Creators Call Shop here on YouTube. My name is Marcy and today I wanted to just do a little bit of uh, talking and I'm going to try to make prayer pockets um, in light of our current situation worldwide and countrywide um, with coronavirus. I just wanted to sit down and have a little chat and just talk from our heart and then I'm going to be making these prayer pockets so you have something to watch while we talk. All right, but first, get yourself something to drink, get yourself comfy, and then we'll be right back in just a minute. Okay, welcome back. So today's video is something a little bit different from what I usually do. And that's because um, I'm going to try to talk and try to work at the same time. And I, I'm really good at doing one or the other, but not both together usually. So um, I, I don't do tutorials and that sort of thing typically because I'm not very good at it. And the talking and working thing is not great. But I just really wanted to come and chat with you from my heart about our current situation and it's just some thoughts I had about on um, how to handle things. So this video was originally kind of a culmination of a couple of different videos. The first one was from Lydia Sen, S-E-N-N, -N, and she's a YouTuber who does lifestyle and budgeting and frugal videos. Uh, she just recently put one out about routines that she relies on or falls back on when life gets a little bit crazy. And she had actually created that not because we were having a virus situation in the country, but because things in her personal life were a little bit hectic and they're doing a remodel and a bunch of other things. And so just some things you can rely on in those times and how to kind of get back on track, which got me thinking about things that I usually do to prepare for fall or different things when I know it's gonna be a busy season in my life. And then the second video that I, uh, came across like right after that is from a wonderful lady. Her channel name is The White Cottage Company and her name is Mary and she does a lot of redoing, uh, refurbishing furniture and DIY videos and different things and she's got a lovely style. But she was doing a video on batch cooking for spring. Now in my life I like to kind of batch cook and prep for fall and winter as it's getting cold out and I just like to have things available so when the schedule gets busy I don't have to worry about cooking for the night. She does this in the spring and I started thinking man I could do that too because spring is just as crazy in our family as the holidays. So between those two videos but I was kind of thinking this all over and then the whole coronavirus thing uh, situation exploded onto the scene and literally between like last Tuesday to Friday everything just changed so much with closures and schools being closed and businesses going being asked to close and states saying hey you know don't travel or what have you just you know everybody being asked to stay home and essentially shelter in place almost like a disaster situation but in this case it's trying to prevent a disaster we're trying to be prepared so I just wanted to come and started it got me thinking on a whole lot of levels about what do I do to prepare when I know something's coming what do I fall back on what do I like to do and I thought well maybe you'll get some value out of it so that's a very long intro I apologize before I get started on that though I want to do some shout outs because I am so excited I have 15 subscribers and I want to thank you all very much because that's already about three times more than I ever had following me on Facebook and it's just very exciting so I hope that as God uses this channel we can we can grow together and we can inspire and encourage each other so the first uh, three people I'd like to shout out to are Sandra Wright Lise Bedard and Diane Shaw. So I want to thank you and welcome you to my channel. 
and you are numbers 13, 14, and 15, <laughs> respectively. Number 12 was my husband. I subscribed him myself. So anyway, shout out to my husband. And then I also want to just thank those who've already been kind of following me along for the last couple of years. And um, my, our cousin Carrie and my daughter, my mom, um, different friends from church, Dion, and a um, couple folks that have followed me already on Facebook, Debbie and, and Dee, and then a lovely lady named Lisa who leaves fun comments. And then also the last two people um, are my friend Carol and her friend Carrie. So thank you guys for joining me. Oh, and my friend Michelle. Can't forget my friend Michelle. Michelle's great. She shares me. She follows me. We actually, you know, we talk about stuff. And my friend Josie. So I just want to say thanks to all of you. And if you're new to my channel, I would love it if you would just say hi in the comments and just, you know, so I can get to know your names. Unfortunately on YouTube, they don't really show me a whole long list. I have to kind of catch the, catch the notification and write down your name. So I'm, I uh, want to make sure that as we grow together, I say hello and welcome. And um, especially to my daughter, Camille, who's been kind of my technical advisor all along the way. She's done some filming for me. And my other daughter, Katie, who also has done a little bit of filming for me. But Camille's kind of my um, technical guru. And so just thanks to everybody because I'm excited. 15 subbies is pretty freaking awesome. Thank you. <laughs> all right. So down to the business at hand. So what I wanted to work on today were prayer pockets and I'm going to start cutting just scraps, all these scraps you see here. I'm going to start trimming them down just so I have something to do while I talk. And then um, I'm trying to prepare them because I have these books here that I am wanting to make journals out of soon. There's the story of Easter, Psalms and Proverbs, Lord's Prayer, Prayers and Graces, I have a bunch of Jonah. I have like seven copies of Jonah. But anyway, all these colors go really well with these pages and these journals that I'm hoping to make soon. So I will start by trimming papers and making pockets. But the other thing that I had um, in mind was a while back I made a journal called Consider the Lily. And the topic of that journal was worry and then how do we handle worry. And for that journal... I didn't want to say something trite, like, wow, just don't worry, just be happy, because frankly, that's useless advice, and it's not very realistic. <laughs> so, as I was, sorry, this is going to be kind of messy, you know, maybe a little bit loud, I'm sorry. Uh, as I was prepping to do that journal, I did a whole long study on what does scripture have to say about the topic of worry, and I discovered a few things. And that is, number one, that scripture doesn't say a lot about worry. Specifically calling it worry, what they call it is care, concern, burden. And that most of the scriptures that address the topic of worry were spoken by Jesus himself in, um, to his disciples, to his followers. And almost everything that I could find in the Bible was the words of Christ. So I thought that was very interesting. Oops. Ah. Anyway, so those were just a couple of very interesting things that I discovered when I was doing my journal on worry. And I will try to insert a couple of pictures so you can see what it looked like. But in that journal, somewhere along the way, I kind of, I, I came across the phrase, turn your worries into prayers. And so I made prayer pockets to go in that journal. And I would like to do something similar for these journals. Anyway, so that's kind of the thought. I'm like combining different thoughts from different things all into one video. So I hope it doesn't get disjointed. I did make notes. So let's talk about, um, I'm gonna call this uh, Panic, Preparedness, and Prayer Pockets. That's the title of this video. Um, and so let's talk about antidotes to panic. 
which certainly, I mean, it seems like people have lost their ever-loving minds, doesn't it? Um, obviously, in any situation where people feel threatened, they begin to exhibit behaviors that are essentially selfish, but also survivalist, you know? So this hoarding to, uh, toilet paper thing. Sorry, I got to measure this. This hoarding toilet paper and going to the store and overbuying more than you need and making sure that you get something because the other guy, you know, you might not have it. You want to make sure you have it and not the other guy. Um, to some degree is the human condition. But that doesn't necessarily mean that it's the right way to respond to a tragedy or to an emergency situation. And folks, we're going to have emergencies all the way through our lives. We're always going to have something that comes along at some point and disrupts the, the ebb and flow of every day. And this situation is no different. I was trying to think of times in my life, besides seasonally, where I like to prepare um, and where being prepared got me through and one of those times was many years ago when I had a one-year-old and a five-year-old and my husband had started a new job and he wound up losing that job. They, they fired him in the middle of all that. He had been diagnosed with a gallbladder issue. He woke up in the middle of the night in extreme pain and we had to rush him to the emergency room and he wound up with emergency gallbladder surgery. And, uh, after his recovery, which isn't super long from gallbladder, but, you know, it's a couple of weeks. I don't remember exactly. And he went back to his new job where it was already kind of apparent it was not a great fit. And they said, oh, we're going to let you go. You're just not measuring up. And so we got fired. He got fired. Um, two months into a brand new job. And they had recruited him. They went out and basically romanced him into this job. They heard about him. They wooed him. They promised him all kinds of stuff and it didn't work out. So we lost this job and it was the holidays. It was just before he, the gallbladder thing was in October and he came home and it was beginning of November. So right before Thanksgiving and Christmas and all of that. And I have to say that actually being out of work during the holidays, while that may seem really kind of awful and a terrible thing it was actually kind of nice because he was around he was available and we had our holidays together as a family um, it wasn't all bad now because I like to hunker down and get prepared we had food in the freezer that I had pre-done I kind of do this weird nesting thing every fall anyway <laughs> where I want to feel like I've like I'm stocked up, like, you know, the harvest, I guess the modern day equivalency of a harvest. <laughs> so I do, I try to figure out what, what have I got? What can I make? Use up things that have been in the freezer for a while and make casseroles or soup or whatever, and just be all cozy, nice. And we'd been saving up, been saving up to have our will done. So we had a little bit of money in savings. And because I had all those casseroles on hand, um, in the freezer and because we had a little bit in savings and fortunately my husband even though it was the holidays he was interviewed by another company and ended up working for them I, I believe he started in February so that was 2000 February yep February of 2000 so um, we went roughly two and a half to three months, but I didn't feel like we, we suffered partly because we were prepared and that money that unfortunately that money that <laughs> was supposed to go towards having our will done to protect our little wee ones wound up going to our house payment. But I'm grateful that I had it because the situation could have been way different. And yeah, he went on unemployment for a while and on unemployment, you get paid every week. Um, which was interesting. So, uh, that was, that was a little bit different. So the budget had to be adjusted, but we, we got our bills paid and I learned what do I need right now and what can wait till later? What, what can we put off till next week? But we always had money 
didn't, you know, to pay for what we needed and we didn't worry about fruit and in, we didn't worry about food a lot. It was, it was actually very nice. I always stock up in my pantry. So, uh, my antidote to panic, the first one would be preparedness. Get yourself prepared. Um, and this comes under the heading of basic house, house, uh, homemaking skills. Everybody's a homemaker because you're going to live somewhere and you have to take care of yourself in that, in that space called home. So it's not just housewives, you know, it's not just, um, that image that you have of just mommy staying home or whatever, that's wherever you are, whatever your situation, you are going to be a homemaker of some kind because you have to make your space livable for you. So always have the staples on hand. Now, right now, of course, the grocery stores are empty. Um, and if you haven't been practicing this yet, this is something definitely you can begin once the crazy is over. But get your stock, you know, stock up on your basics, have your staples, obviously frozen and canned foods are going to last longer and frozen are better than canned, but those are both better than no food at all. Um, you know, cause eventually fresh, you may not always be able to get fresh things, um, stocking up, um, in your freezer, your freezer is your friend. So anything that you're not going to use up right away, or you see might start going bad in your fridge, seriously, just put it in a Ziploc and freeze it. Get all the air out so it doesn't go bad. Air is the enemy of food. So <laughs> you, you don't want to have air in there. But then later, you can come back and take that little bit of onion and that little bit of bell pepper and that little bit of corn or whatever. And hey, look at that. You got the basics for a chowder. So don't throw out things. If you're not going to use it up right away, freeze it. Freezer's your friend. I tell my kids this all the time and they think I'm crazy. But that's part of being prepared. And then you can go back and use those up. Um, to make something new and different to so stock up on your basics practice your freezer um, you know and just general home homemaking I think the reason why everybody's buying TPs because they're the kind of people that wait till they're on their last roll and I never thought about running out of toilet paper in my life until one time I worked with a gal and her mother was always short on TP and she lived in fear and then I, I learned you should stock up on TP so now I do <laughs> <laughs> that was not the case at my house growing up. So we always had toilet paper because my mom was always prepared. A little bit of ramble. Okay, so the first P was preparedness. Second P is patience. And along with that, um, it's not permanent. This is not permanent. This is not going to last forever. Yes, there will be fallout from this situation. Every time I say that, my husband's like, well, there's going to be repercussions. Yes, but this situation itself is not permanent. Everything passes. This too shall pass. Patience. It's going to change. I don't know if it'll change for the better or not. I can't promise that, but it will change for sure. So keep that in mind. That was that another P along with that would be perspective. Keep your perspective on the situation. You're going to find that you can approach situations that are unwelcome unwanted like this with with the proper mindset you can then allow yourself to come up with solutions to the problem at hand and you don't feel so panicked and frankly there's a lot of freedom in having those choices you get more choices when you're prepared when you have those things on hand and when you're when you have a little bit saved away whether it was accidentally or on purpose you know it just gives you choices Okay, so number three is prudence. Uh, use your good sense, folks. God gave you common sense for a reason, and uh, he expects us to use it. Everybody, every single person on this planet was born with common sense. I know it's hard to believe, but it's true. Right now, as much as it's kind of hurtful, we have to distance ourselves from each other. But even so... We are not in a situation in this day and age where having to be distant means having to be completely absent. And what a miracle of our modern age that we have things like YouTube, where we can communicate, Facebook, Instagram, uh, FaceTime, if you have a, if you have a um, Apple phone. Uh, I just got the Marco Polo app, which my kids have had, and so I got it so I could chat with my friend who 
incidentally, it lives in Seattle, home base to the big crisis right now. And um, I can say, hey, wow. You know, and, e and even without all of that, we've always had telephones. So you can always pick up the phone and call, right? But we have so many more amazing ways to just stay in touch. And it's like, it feels like the person is right there or right next door. These are great, great modern inventions of our time to help us stay help us stay connected, help us stay together. And while it is disappointing that we have to postpone some things, these kinds of things happen. This isn't the first emergency and it sure as heck is not gonna be the last, right? If you practice these as a continual way of life, as a continual mindset, when these emergencies happen, because they will, you're not gonna be thrown off your axis as much. I mean, you're still going to be thrown off your axis, I, guess, I suspect. I mean, it'd be crazy not to be, but you have choices when you have a plan and a little bit of preparation under your belt. Let me see. So prudent, choose your good sense, practice healthy practices, do those things that they're telling us to do because they're important. And, and the only way we can get rid of a virus that has decided to attack the entire world at once is to hunker down and and stay inside and do those things. I think there's going to be, there's a lot of good that can come out of this. So there's your perspective. Um, that wasn't one of my P's, but I like it. Perspective. Um, nothing bad is going to happen ultimately from people spending more time with their families and just slowing down and what an interesting time of year to be able to have this happen like it's spring we could be outside we can you know we can still go outside this is great this is awesome we can still go to the park we can still take a walk take a walk every night with your kids with your family with your husband your, I don't like to walk with my dog she slows me down but anyway with your dog if they're a great walker <laughs> and um you know it's spring and also Coincidentally, it's the season of Lent. We're already in that mindset of sacrifice, or a lot of folks are. Um, I come from an evangelical church, so we don't practice Lent. But even so, it's um, something that people are embracing. You don't have to belong to a liturgical faith, like Catholic or Lutheran or Episcopalian, to benefit. And, and a lot of folks are embracing the concept of Lent, but we're at, we're at a time where we're sacrificing. We're already sacrificing. We have that mindset. And so pull the belt another notch tighter, really look at, is this a need or a want this thing, this dire urgency that I feel the sense of urgency over whatever situation or what have you. Um, is it really? Is it really dire? It might be. I mean, I'm not saying it can't be, but it might be. But what if it's not? What can you get by without right now? So perspective. I wanted to talk about checking in with those that you know are in need, whether it's someone who's elderly and can't get out. And I don't have a P word for this. What's the word? Neighborliness. No, uh, <laughs> I don't know. Anyway, but... I guess that's part of being practical in your and your perspective is check in with those that you know are going to be more affected or who have to be homebound because of health reasons. You know, you can even give them a call and say, hey, is there anything you need? I am going to the store. They can leave their money on the porch and you can leave the groceries on the porch. You don't even have to necessarily have face-to-face -face contact if they're immunocompromised. I think of people like cancer treatments or um, I don't know anyone with AIDS, but it's a real thing. There are really people who are affected by it, and that's huge. Like when you have no protection, if you have a lung issue, that's that's the one that I think about because I've had pneumonia four times, you know? Um, none of them were fun, but it's, you know, this thing attacks your respiratory system, and if I'm not careful, I can wind up back in a similar situation, only probably 10 times worse. I don't know. I don't know, but I'm, I'm not going to focus on that. That's not where my perspective is. So reach out, be neighborly, find out, you know, who, who needs help and how can you help them? Because honestly, this crisis, this crisis is for everyone. It's equal opportunity. 
And the only way we're going to pull through it together is by pulling together. I have my mom, who is 75, almost 76, and who is always insulted should anyone insinuate that she might be remotely frail. And she is not remotely frail. She's not. <laughs> so, I mean, she's right. But she is in that high-risk age group. And I called to check in on her. Me and my daughter and I called her and she was so mad that we would even bother to, to call and make sure she's okay because she's pretty sure she, nothing's going to happen to her. But she is a single lady on her own. What kind of child would I be if I didn't call and check up on my mom? I mean, seriously, I'd be a terrible, terrible human being. But we did and I'll keep doing it because... You know, she needs some looking after, and that's literally my responsibility as her child. My next one here, bringing us to our topic at hand, is prayer. Um, as a Christian woman, I believe in prayer. I believe prayer is the most powerful weapon we have. And we don't really, I think, understand, I mean, how how effective it is and and you might say wow that's just sitting at home doing nothing but no it is asking the god of the universe who created everything who's all powerful to step in to your situation and to to work in it i mean um it's just an amazing weapon and that's why satan keeps trying to tell us not not to do it. He interferes in that. He, he wants us to forget. He wants us to panic. He wants us afraid because when we're afraid, we don't trust. So prayer, if you are a praying person, turn your worries into prayer. Well, I have a few more of these to do. Um, I may decide to just stop and finish cutting and go on to the next part. I don't know. We'll see. So prayer is a practical response to a situation and it's much better than panic so don't panic pray and I, I mean I'm telling you sometimes you just find yourself having to stop what you're doing and stop and pray 90 times a day and if that's what it takes that's what it takes and it's okay it's not like we have a limit it's not like you've used up your prayer tokens for the day and you have to stop and wait till tomorrow no it's not like Weight Watchers points no 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 this prayer is constant, it's eternal, it's always available, and you can do it sitting in your car. You can, I used to pray a lot at school, <laughs> mainly because I was either annoyed or frustrated or didn't understand math. I prayed myself through math. Math was a big one. I prayed a lot at school. Anyway, they never knew. Prayer in schools happens all the time. You just don't know it. Um... Anyway, next thing, so prayer, prudence or practical, perspective, preparedness, patience, and then if you are a Christian, I want to tell you to practice, practice your faith, okay? So I am a woman who believes in the truth of scripture and in the deity of Christ, and I'm a Christian, and because of that, that's going to come out in this YouTube channel. And while this isn't necessarily a YouTube channel only for Christians, it's not a Christian channel per se, you're going to get that perspective because that's who I am and that's literally why I started my shop. But, you know, you're going to get that perspective on this channel. So you don't have to be a person of faith even to watch. That's I'm not saying that because I want to have you whoever you are, as long as you're nice. Um, but... That certainly is something that you're going to hear on this channel. So um, don't be surprised when that happens. And don't leave me nasty comments. Those are not necessary. <laughs> but anyway, um, but as a Christian, so now I'm going to speak to those of you who are believers. As a Christian, we have a greater responsibility. There's some certain things we've been told to do, and we don't get the luxury of picking and choosing or saying, well, I'll do it if I want. I mean, there's specific commands. And uh, one of those is that we have to look after those who are in need, you know, so whether that's a health issue or whether it's a money issue, and this is not the time 
to be abandoning our tithing or anything. That's, that's literally the church's responsibility is to step in and to help people who are in need. And that's, you know, unfortunately where churches have fallen down and Christians have fallen down, that's where the government has had to step in. And it's really ultimately not the government's responsibility. It's our responsibility as believers. So don't neglect your responsibility as a Christian to care for those who are in need. So the first, um, you know, that layer of responsibility, how we follow that is, um, first for your own house, be prepared, but don't, don't be greedy, you know, get what you need to take care of your family and then for other believers and then for your community, caring for your community and then for the world. So, you know, God gives us an abundance so that we can share. My favorite verse, actually, one of my favorite ones is Ephesians 4, 28. Uh, Let him who steals steal no more, but instead work with his hands so that he may have something to provide for those in need, to share with those in need. So that, that was from memory. I'll read it to you from the New Living Translation, Ephesians 4, 28. If you are a thief, quit stealing. Instead, use your hands for good, hard work, and then give generously to others in need. So we have a responsibility. Stop taking what isn't ours or what we don't need and start giving for those who do and work hard so you do have something to share. That's really it. And this might seem pie in the sky to some of you. You'd be like, eh, whatever. But it really is, it really is true. And if we were practicing what we say we believe... And a lot of this would take care of itself, right? God, God gives you, God gives abundantly. And I believe that one of the reasons he tells us to practice generosity is so that he can bless other people through us and he blesses us so that he can bless others. That's really, that's just the way it is. It's a fact. Um, and he tells us to test him in that. And that's once you start practicing that, that gives you a basis for trusting him even more, you know, when you have a a situation like now. And, and I mean, I'm not going to say I haven't been tempted. I'm like, Oh man, I should really stock up on pasta. And then I'm like, but do I need pasta? No, I have plenty in the freezer or I mean in the pantry. It's just, it's a natural thing. And, and should I go and get, you know, should I go and get this? Should I go and get some more meat? Should I go And then I stop and I take stock and I think, you know what? No, you're fine because you don't need to take more than you need. You don't. It's kind of that manna principle, only take what you need for the day. And I think God gives us that commandment on purpose so that we have to trust, have to trust his provision. So Christians, I want you to trust. I want you to share and not take more than is yours, but definitely, definitely provide for your own family and for what is necessary. I used to work with a guy and his dad was a pastor, this poor kid. And he unfortunately had been rather jaded by being a PK or a preacher's kid because his dad gave away everything, everything. And, and while that was very kind of him to be generous, he did not provide for his own family. And scripture clearly says that you should also Provide for your own family. And if you don't do that, what does it say? You're worse than an unbeliever? I tried to find the verse, but I couldn't find it. But, um, you know, we have that responsibility as well. Take care of each other. Take care of those who are in need. Pray. Be prepared. Practice good habits. Keep your good perspective. Um, 2 Timothy 1.7 For God has not given us a spirit of fear and timidity, but of power, love, and self-discipline. So our proper response is not to flip out and go rogue on everybody. Our proper response is to rest and trust and stop and go, How, hey, wow, um, Lord, what's, what's my responsibility in this situation? What would you have me do? Well, this one needs an extra trim. Um, and let him use you in this situation. It's like the greatest opportunity on the planet for Christians to come together to impact neighborhoods. I mean, I'm an idealist and I'm just going to run with it today because so much good can come out of it. And what a blessing that the weather is warm. And what a blessing we can still go outside. And what a blessing we have all this modern technology that allows us to 
do church remotely, you know, and allows us to um, connect with our neighbors and allows us to still connect with each other on some level. So all is not lost, little, little chickens, <laughs> chicken little, all is not lost. Um, and it will pass. And, and I mean, I'm just grateful the weather's nice. It could be way worse, guys. We could be having blizzards and be stuck inside with screaming children and stinky diapers and fevers. <laughs> don't, don't ever want to go back to that. Anyway, um, it could totally be way worse than it is. Um, it could definitely be better than it is, but put your focus in the right spot, you know? Um, I wanted to read to you a hymn, which is currently buried below all this stuff I've been cutting out. Okay. So let me read this hymn to you. And then I'm going to try to decorate some envelopes. And at that point, if I run out of really entertaining things to say, and just real deep wisdom, because you know, that's, that's what I do, deep wisdom. Um, sorry, I'm being sarcastic, sort of. <laughs> If I run out of things to say, I'll speed up the video so you can watch me make my little pockets, okay? Out of envelopes and things. So, so this is a hymn um, that's been around for ages and ages. I don't see the copyright date, which means it's really old. So uh, it's called God Will Take Care of You, and it's based on Hebrews 13, 5. I will never leave thee nor forsake thee. And that's God speaking to us. Be not dismayed, whate'er betide. God will take care of you. Beneath his wings of love abide, God will take care of you. God will take care of you through every day or all the way. He will take care of you. God will take care of you. Through days of toil, when your heart doth fail, God will take care of you. When dangers fierce your path assail, God will take care of you. And then the chorus, God will take care of you through every day or all the way. He will take care of you. God will take care of you. Verse 3, all you may need, he will provide. God will take care of you. Nothing you ask will be denied. God will take care of you. And then the chorus. And verse 4, no matter what may be the test, God will take care of you. Lean, weary one, upon his breast. God will take care of you. God will take care of you through every day or all the way. He will take care of you. God will take care of you. The other, um, the other song that has been kind of going through my mind was um, His Eyes on the Sparrow. And uh, that, that one comes from, based on Matthew 6, which I also meant to talk about. Um, and Jesus talks about how the flowers have no, no worry about the future. God, God makes them look beautiful and gives them clothes to wear. And the birds do not worry about their food. God feeds them and they just live each and every day. Just They don't worry about it. They just go about their day and they know there's going to be food and they go get it and they move on. And he tells us to be like that in Matthew 6. The other thing I wanted to read was this little poem. An uncertain future, which is certainly something we're all experiencing right now. Wisely enough, God does not let us skip ahead in the story of our lives, but rather leads us page by page to its understandable conclusion in Him. And so, as each of us faces an uncertain future, we can trust in God's promise as expressed by Jeremiah. For I know the plans I have for you, saith the Lord. They are plans for good and not for evil to give a future and a hope. I'm going to stop and do a second one where I speed up um, and decorate the envelopes and make prayer pockets for you. Okay, so what I did was I printed off these um, signs here, these these sheets that say prayer pocket. Turn your worries into prayers. Prayer pocket. I even put right here and I know he his eye is on the sparrow and I know he watches me so I'm going to be cutting them out and then just decorating the envelopes I'll fold them in half so they can go into signature and then decorating both halves so um you can watch along and I'll I'll just be kind of quiet apologies in advance for the really long video but it's more kind of a chat and kind of a watch me do something while I chat <laughs> so <laughs> if it's too long boy I don't know what to do
Okay, here we go. show you some of the things I have. So I have all these different colored envelopes from different places. I have, I thought these might be kind of fun somehow. These are the plastic paper clips and I thought with the bright colors they would look really great in these journals. I don't know what I'll, what I'll do with them exactly yet. I've got the button, I've got a bunch of paper scraps here, I've got some washi tape and stuff here. Just trying to match the colors of what's in the what's in those books, pretty much. And I have these really pretty stickers that's, that are spring themed. And I have these, these are fun, aren't those fun? And then a couple bigger scraps and an old doily. It's already ripped, so we'll just help it out by ripping it up some more. And then I have this whole basket with ribbons and things. And I've got this, uh, decorative scissors, laces, ribbon, and small pieces of fabric. See, can you see that? Yeah, small, small fabric pieces, so. Okay, it's been a couple days and I'm back to finish up working on these prayer pockets. Uh, the first part of this video was a lot of talking and cutting paper and um, I really wanted to show you how I make these prayer pockets. So I'm going to continue. I have a couple of them done and I'll show you everything at the end. But it got a little weird with no, nothing in the background. It was just dead silent and I was working very slowly. So I just kind of turned the camera off. So we'll just get to work.
Okay, that's it for now. I've made five here and I'll be making some more when I do the journals. But I'd like to thank you for joining me today. I'll spread these out so you can see what they look like. Um, one of the things I was trying to consider while I put these together was how it's going to go into the journal. So if I fold it and sew it, this is one side of the signature and then later as we flip through this will be the other side of the signature so just trying to make sure that fronts and backs match up so there's this one this one this one this one's still wet this one and then this one and then i'll make a tag that goes in here and then i'm thinking about um putting this little label on the top of that tag that will slide in there. So we'll see. We'll see how that turns out. Anyhow, I appreciate you all joining me today and coming along on my journey. And I invite you to put comments down below. You know, obviously it's just my thoughts on the current situation, but truly it, we're going to have those times in life where things are, are stressful and are definitely seeming like there's like the world's turned upside down. And so just wanted to be able to give you a way maybe to process that or to consider it. If you're not a person who prays, there's always value in even just writing your thoughts down and putting them on paper and getting them out of your head. And, and so you could do something similar. So maybe you're not praying, but you're writing down your thoughts and concerns, put them aside in, a, in an envelope or a pocket and then come back and look at them later and see how those things have resolved themselves. So um, if you've got any value out of this today, I appreciate you giving me a thumbs up and go ahead and subscribe if you haven't done that. Links are below in the description box and this is an unusually long video than what I'm probably going to usually do, but it was also just a little bit of a different direction. So thank you. Give me a say hello and and I'll look forward to being with you guys until next time. So until next time, be inspired and do something creative today. Bye-bye.